the most important things you can ever get on a soil test is what's called the base saturation test. And one of the nutrients we want you to look at on that test is called sodium. The sodium base saturation percentage, ideally we'd like to have that between about a half a percent and one percent. But what we want to talk about today is what if it's too low and especially what if it's too high and you've got a sodic soil. Brian mentioned in his opening remarks how having too much sodium out there can be a concern. And this is really where we want to start today. If you've got 1% sodium in your base saturation test or more, that can certainly become a yield limiting factor. And if you don't figure out why your sodium levels are moving up, well, the problem's only going to get worse. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you've got 2%, 5%, 10% sodium out there, and you've got a sodic soil that needs remediation immediately. Okay, Darren said the word immediately, and I'm gonna agree with that, but the problem is it's not going to be an overnight fix. Here's what I mean. If you have five, 10, 15% sodium in your field, that didn't happen overnight. You're not gonna be able to remove that overnight, but you do have to get started on it. And the first thing that you've gotta do is take some good soil tests. We'd like to see some zero to six inch tests. We'd also like to see some six to 12 inch tests and find out what's really going on. And here are some of the factors we're looking for. Yes, obviously we wanna see the base saturation test. We wanna find out what percentage of sodium we have. And we wanna find out how many parts per million of sodium we have. But the other things that are super important to this are calcium, and sulfur. If we know how much our calcium levels are and we know how much our sulfur levels are, that could change a little bit in what we do to fix this soil. It's still first gonna start with tile. We're gonna tell you to put tile in the ground because most likely your number one issue is you have poor drainage. That has to get fixed first. Well, poor or insufficient drainage. We need things to move through that soil and effectively leave. What we have in many cases is we have things that'll move down through the soil a little bit, but then that water table rises again and pushes them right back up. Certainly we see this in areas of fields that have big white spots where, where there's literally just salt laying out there in the field that it might wash in with some rain, but then again, when that water table rises, it pushes it right back out. Okay, now I'm glad Darren mentioned the word salt because salt and sodium are two totally separate things. When we have sodium, the way you can get rid of it out of your field is you can turn it into a salt. And that's the reason why we wanna know how much sulfur is out in that field. If you can, can combine sulfur or sulfate, I should say, together with sodium, sodium sulfate, that is a salt, that is leachable, that we can flush out with normal moisture. Obviously we can speed the process up if we also have irrigation, but with normal moisture or, and or irrigation plus good drainage, which again, I'm talking tile. Now the other thing that I mentioned is calcium. The reason we want good calcium levels in that soil is it helps the soil to be more porous. What I mean by that is if you have too much magnesium in relation to calcium, well now your soil is going to be tight and poorly drained. We'd like to see that calcium number up into the 65 to 75% range, so we're going to be pushing some calcium out there if our calcium levels are not high. Now you may be thinking, wait a minute, if I have to raise my calcium levels, calcium and having too much of it can actually increase my soil pH. Yeah, it sure could, but here's the other side of the coin. With sodium, it raises soil pH four to one over calcium. So we would much rather have calcium in the soil than sodium because sodium is gonna be one that really moves that pH up. The other thing that Brian said is with magnesium that, okay, we can't get infiltration through the soil and there isn't as much air and pore space with magnesium. Well, with sodium, it's even worse. It really seals off the soil. And if you've got a lot of sodium out in that soil, chances are it's tough to even get water to penetrate. So it can be a real challenge when you have too much sodium. All right, so once again, when it comes to fixing the sodic soil, first thing we got a soil test, second thing we got to get tile on the ground, third thing we're probably gonna look at either applications of calcium or sulfur, depending on how our calcium and sulfur levels are in the soil. If we have low calcium, we want more of that. If we have low sulfur, we obviously need a lot more of that, and especially in the sulfate form, so we can turn that sodium into sodium sulfate as a salt, leach it out. Now, in addition to that, I would suggest doing some tillage. I would suggest taking anything you can find in terms of 
plant material. So let's say it's straw, it's hay, it's something, some type of plant material. And let's start stirring that into the soil a little bit. That'll help us a little bit with porosity. Just moving some of the stuff around a little bit does seem to make a difference. So having a sodic soil is tough. And unfortunately, if you've got 15% sodium, if you've got that, it's not gonna be an overnight fix. You start doing some of these things though, and over the next 10 to 20 years, you absolutely can get this under control. Now, one last thing that I wanna mention in terms of how did we get here, water quality absolutely can make a difference if you're irrigating. So I would strongly encourage you, make sure anytime you're irrigating, and if you have any irrigation at all, your water should be tested at least annually to find out is it good quality water or does it need to be treated before you're putting it out on your field? The other thing is manure. If you're putting out large quantities of manure, we've seen uh, different holding ponds outside of dairies, for example, become really high in sodium. And when you spread that out in your field in one shot, when you're putting thousands of gallons per acre, you could raise your sodium percentage dramatically in the field. So make sure you're testing anything that you're gonna be putting on that field in large quantities. There are some crops that can survive higher salt and higher sodium levels, like barley, for example, is a good one. Uh, I would also say when we talked about, actually sodium can be too low in your soil. If you don't have at least a half a percent sodium, that actually can negatively impact yields on certain crops, like some of the brassica species. So you wanna try to pick out crops that can grow well in some of these sodic areas as you're working on your fix over, again, the next decade or two. While sodium is an important nutrient, it can be a problem if you don't have enough, but more commonly, it's a big problem when you have too much of it kind of reminds me of our Weed of the Week. It is a big problem if you have a lot of them out in your field. We'll show you how to stop our Weed of the Week later in the show.